Hi, welcome back to ProShop. In this video, I want to take you through everything that has been done up to this point to this 1967 Holden HRU and show you how a simple project can easily blow out to a full custom build. As usual, here was another build that was supposed to be a quick job. Fit an LS1 with a 6 speed manual, 9 inch in the rear and a few modern upgrades like power steering and air conditioning. However, once we started we couldn't stop until almost every panel had been worked on in some way or another. A long time ago, a previous owner had started doing some modifications that just weren't up to scratch and never finished it properly. It was starting to rust away so I decided to cut it all out and start fresh. Usually I would just have the entire car stripped back to a bare shell first so I knew what I was facing but we were told that the bodywork had already been done so we could just fit the upgrades and get this car driving again. However, as soon as I started cutting, that's when I started finding the rust, and then this build took a turn. It was decided to remove the entire floor of the ute to make way for a new set of chassis rails connecting through to the front K-frame. A custom 4-link was designed and welded in, and the motor and box installed on a new front cross member complete with tubular arms, coilovers and a power steering rack. Once I had the driveline in, I could start on building the tray. I first needed a clean surface to build the new tubs off, however once I started removing the paint I noticed even more rust. It wasn't that bad, most of it was only surface but it had been painted over, something people love to do when they are trying to sell their unfinished project. So I sanded it back until it was clean and started building the tubs. I figured out the size of the spun disc to use and started trimming it in around the chassis. I always make an inner skin that hugs close to the inside of the side panel to weld the tub to. That way I'm not welding directly to the side panel and also still giving maximum clearance for the tyres. I fabricated new side sections of the tray and also the lower panels that connect down to the bottom of the side panel. A new rear wall of the tray was folded up and tacked in place. The spare wheel compartment had been removed to make way for the fuel cell, so I sheeted in the door and made a smooth roll pan. Most of the tray structure was now complete, so it was time to move forward onto the cab. With the floor removed and the motor and gearbox in position, I could map out things like the exhaust, chassis bracing and the gearbox crossmember. Next, I started on folding up the floor and tunnel, but before I welded them in, I unpicked the inner seals, cleaned them out of all the dirt and debris, wire brushed them, sealed them with paint, and then welded on new thicker, stronger seals back on the car. Lastly, I made new lower wall sections to finish the floor of the cab.
floor was in, however, there was still one piece of the tunnel to do, but I find it easier when the motoring gearbox is out of the way. This can be difficult to make because of the different angles, so here's my little trick. First bridge the gap with tape. Mark any folds and cut it out. Transfer the template to sheet metal, cut it out and fold it into shape. If done right, you should be able to tack it in place without any trimming. Now the job to fully weld it all in. Next, I smoothed the firewall and also removed any unwanted holes from the engine bay. Now it was time to install the column and pedals. The old cable clutch was removed and a clutch master was fitted under the dash to the pedal box. The old cowl was unpicked and removed as a better one had been sourced with less rust in it. Before installing it, I fitted a new wiper motor and mocked up where the AC evaporator would sit. With the majority of the welding done in the engine bay, it was time to refit the motor and box and install the radiator. This was supposed to be a bolt-in job, however it needed a few modifications for it to fit. The lower rails were notched and plated. The radiator support needed some trimming, plus a little from where the grill bolts on. Before installing the rear end back into the car, I fully TIG welded the tubs in place both on top and underneath. I bent up a tube cradle for the fuel cell to sit in. This would not only hold it in place, but it would also protect the tank from damage if the car was to bottom out on anything. With the rear end smoothed out, the standard bumperettes would look a bit out of place, so a HD wagon bar was sourced so it could be fitted. These are becoming hard to come by, and this one was in very average condition when it arrived. It needed straightening and some rust repairs, but it was still good enough to use. I first positioned the ends where I wanted them, and then started on joining the center sections. The middle section had such a twist in it, I decided to cut it out and completely fold up a new piece. I smoothed off the mounting bolts and made new brackets for the bumper to bolt onto the car hidden up behind the bar. Once it was fully welded and repaired, it was time to fit it back on the car.
the exhaust parts had arrived, so it was time to start building. A set of headers were bought especially for an LS1 into a HR, but they still needed some modifications for them to fit without hitting on the chassis rails and the steering shaft. With a pair of mufflers at the rear, I snaked the exhaust between the fuel cell and coilovers, up over the diff and following the profile of the chassis rails down to a pair of resonators which were then connect by V-bands to the front section. A pair of high flow cats came off the back of the headers into a crossover pipe and then connect to the rear sections. The whole exhaust was welded into three pieces and then installed back on the car. Up next, I went about finishing the inside of the tray. I cut the sheet and trimmed it around the tubs and the edge of the tray. I marked out and swayed some lines and tacked the panels in place. Once I had both sides in, I fully TIG welded them. Now it was time to make the bed floor, which would become a giant fuel door. I marked out the sheet to follow the lines of the rear wall and folded them into the metal. The whole panel was then wrapped around the steel frame to give it strength. Next I needed a way to hinge it, so I designed one first by making a wooden template to get the right angles and to make sure it didn't hit when opening and closing. The last thing to do were add gas struts and a lock. I recessed the lock into the surround and hid the cable release inside the panel work. Door skins were removed and the shell sandblasted after finding more rust between the panels. They were then repaired and new door skins fitted. Even though I was told that these guards had already been repaired and painted, one look at the back of them and I decided to have them acid dip. Once in bare metal I could see just how bad they were with some dodgy repairs, patches and quite a lot of holes. They were both repaired and fitted. The old tower gate had a lot of damage, so a new skin was ordered. However, these new panels are folded into shape and do not have the curve that the original skins have, so I decided to repair the old one by putting an entire new bottom section on. Next, I stripped all the paint off the sills and the side panels to reveal some nasty patchwork welded in some time ago. 
I removed the lower section completely and fabricated up new ones along with the bottom of the side panel and welded it in place. Passion side needed a lot more work as someone had done a terrible repair on it when nothing lined up, so I cut it off and replaced it all. I first welded back in a new inner seal, then after a few shrinks to slightly curve it, I could fit the outer. A lower section on the side panel was tacked in and the inner step fabricated Finally, it could all be welded in place. Now that all the bodywork was complete, it was time to fit all the other components. Electric vacuum, power steering, and air conditioning pumps were mounted under the tray in custom compartments along with the battery. Inside the cab, the dash was smooth from all vents and unwanted holes and a custom console was fabricated along with an armrest and a hidden compartment to house all the switches. With all the panels back on the car and aligned, the final thing to do was fit the front bumper. Nearly every panel on this car had some sort of work done to it, so it was decided that even this perfect bumper was to be modified. The ends were tucked in closer to the body, all the bolts smoothed off, and the three pieces now welded together as one. While I love the look of this car in bare metal, it's not very practical, so it's now off to the painters. Stay tuned for when this car returns for the final fit up, we can get this car back on the road after over 20 years of it not.